Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's John. Um, I often get asked about uh, things that I mention uh, in other videos. Um, I'm trying to make this channel suited towards the beginner in film photography or collecting vintage cameras and it's um, it's not always uh, possible for me to remember not to use technical terms uh, without explaining myself first. One of the things that came up recently was the idea of pushing or pulling your film. Um, and so I thought I'd do an explanatory video about that. So here goes. Here we've got two films. Um, the idea of pushing or pulling uh, a film in a nutshell is basically uh, shooting and developing film at a different ISO or ASA um, than the one that the film is actually rated for. Uh, obviously, I need to go into a longer answer for most of you. So um, this 35 millimeter here is uh, 200 ASA. So under normal circumstances, load this into a camera. And if it has the option, you would set your camera to 200 ASA. And you know then that it's metering uh, and shooting everything correctly for that speed of film. Likewise with this um, 120 film here. Um, this has uh, been marked with an ASA or ISO of 125. So again, if it's got an option for that on your camera, you would uh, set that um, uh, setting into the camera. And again, it would meter correctly for um, that speed of film. A quick reminder then, or if you're new to the channel, um, ISO, film speed, ASA, however you refer to it, um, it's basically uh, an indicator of um, light sensitivity. Um, lower number, slower film, um, normally a finer grain, um, needs less light in order to uh, react uh, accordingly, um, but requires uh, slower shutter speed. Um, fast film or a higher number um, has more uh, grain usually, um, a higher sensitivity to light um, and can be used with obviously fast shutter speeds because of that. So if we go back to my 35 millimeter film here, <coughs> its rated speed is 200. If I wanted to push this film, what I would do is set my camera one full stop uh, higher. And what I mean by that, uh, I'll come back to, but basically, uh, this is 200, I would set my camera to 400 ASA. That would be classed as pushing this film uh, one full stop. If I wanted to pull it by one full stop, I would uh, set my camera speed to 100. Now, obviously, if your camera doesn't have a setting to tell it um, what film is being used, um, or perhaps um, it just relies on DX or whatever else, you're not going to be able to do this without doing a lot of maths in your head. Um, but basically speaking, if you can set the speed, um, pushing it by increasing the ASO of the, onto the camera um, and decreasing it or pulling it um, by reducing the ISO on the camera. So... Uh, as an example, my 35 millimeter is 200, um, and normally then I would set my camera speed to 200 ASA. But to push it um, one full stop, I would basically just adjust that to 400. So what do we mean by a stop? Well, basically we are either doubling when pushing or halving when pulling the amount of light uh, let in when we're taking a photo. So a 400 film, um, with a camera set to 800 is a plus one or um, uh, pushed uh, one stop, if you like, um, because we are, uh, we've doubled it, we have um, underexposed it by plus one. Um, if we take that same 400 film, but we set our camera to 200 ASA, uh, we're halving it. So it's a minus one or one stop down, one stop pulled, whatever you want to look at it. Uh, this time, obviously, in overexposure. So what's the point I hear you ask? Well, there's a number of different reasons. If we take pushing film, first of all, um, low light is probably the most common reason why people do it. In other words, the film in your camera doesn't have an, a higher enough ISO or is not fast enough, if you like, to cope with the light conditions. And therefore, um, 
if you're setting your camera at box speed, um, you just can't get uh, the shutter speed that you're looking for, uh, especially if it's handheld. So by pushing it one stop or two stops, um, you're allowing you to shoot at a faster speed and still get um, uh, the image that you're looking for. However, it does have some other effects as well. So pushing film again, for instance, um, will um, have a, a more contrasty look, um, more grain, um, it might lighten the image a little bit. So it's, there's kind of artistic reasons as well why you might push, uh, um, you know, uh, the box speed uh, one or two stops. Pulling film then is basically the opposite. Um, it's uh, often done in sort of very bright, sunny areas. Um, and it has the opposite effect. Um, it will uh, produce less contrast, um, perhaps less details in the shadows, that type of thing. But again, there are reasons uh, why you might do it. Um, and it's no harm in perhaps doing a bit of experimentation. Some films, uh, some manufacturers of films, um, they would push or pull uh, better than others. So it's perhaps uh, doing a bit of research and trying out different films and just having a little bit of fun with it, providing it's not that crucial role that you need to look just right. Um, but the knock-on effect of this is that the film needs to be developed. So for instance, again, going back to my 35mm, um, box speed is 200. Unless I'm developing myself and I know to actually adjust the development times and that sort of stuff, um, uh, I need to tell the uh, developer, whoever's doing it for the lab or whatever, that it wasn't shot at 200, that it was uh, the pushed or pulled. And we would do that by writing plus one, plus two. Some films even actually have little boxes for you to tick. Um, or if you're doing it online, um, there'll be some options that you can tell the developer that it has uh, been pushed or pulled by one or two stops, whatever it happens to be. Um, and once they do that, once they make allowances for that, obviously you'll get the correct results based on what you anticipated. Pushing and pulling film can be done black and white or colour, although pulling uh, colour film doesn't look great to be honest with you it's more often done for black and white but obviously by all means give it a try um, and have an experiment finally then a couple of tips and reminders if you're going to attempt this yourself like I say not all films uh, react to pushing and pulling as well as others generally speaking the cheaper um, films don't react as well, especially in colour. Um, you tend to get colour shift and it just doesn't look right, whereas the more expensive ones um, tend to react better. So things like Kodak Portra, uh, Cinestill, they're all films that work really well. But uh, leading on to my second tip, don't just make a note on the film when you're sending it off to be developed. Um, make a note yourself of what films you use, um, what settings you tried pushing or pulling, um, and see if you can get, um, uh, you know, see if you can build up a bit of a pattern of you know what works best. That's part of the fun is the experimentation, definitely. Um, don't ever push or pull more than two or three stops. Um, there is uh, a, a limit on, on how far this will go and you'll just be wasting film. Uh, like I say, try and use it on a camera that you can actually set uh, the ISO on. Um, the cheaper cameras, uh, the Lomo type um, uh, cameras or whatever else, you're not going to be able to do that on um, and you'll, you'll just have um, uh, poor results. Uh, nice decent glass lenses and uh, decent settings on the camera, um, uh, definitely the way to go. So there we go. Um, hopefully I've explained pushing and pulling film um, uh, well enough that you can understand what the heck I'm talking about. Um, if you do want any more information um, and to see some samples of pushed and pulled film, how it actually ends up looking. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below to a great website called The Dark Room, who has a very comprehensive um, explanation, uh, including a chart on um, uh, how to actually adjust um, film speed and camera speed to get the desired effect you're looking for, whether it be for artistic reasons or um, uh, you know, environmental reasons or whatever else, have a go at uh, pushing and pulling yourself. Um, other than that, once again, thank you 
ever so much for all your subscriptions, likes, comments, and everything else. Um, it's been very, very busy for me recently. I haven't been able to get uh, videos quite out as quite as quickly as I'd hoped, um, but uh, I appreciate you all for sticking with me. Um, have a great time with it, and uh, I'll see you next time.